football coverage. Powered by Davis Law Firm. It's being said the Cowboys picked up a lot of size during this year's NFL draft, starting with their first pick at number 24, offensive lineman Tyler Smith, who checks in at 6'3", 325. And taking a survey of the rest of the Cowboys' nine draft picks, including fifth rounder offensive lineman Mac Waletska, who is 6'8", 312. And fellow fifth round pick John Ridgway, a defensive tackle out of Arkansas, 6'5", 321. This all has to do with what happened to the Cowboys against the Niners, the team that sent the Cowboys home in the first round of the playoffs. Niners held the Cowboys just 45 yards rushing by running over Dallas with 169 yards that included the 26-yard game ceiling touchdown by Debo Samuel. I'm really uh, good uh, because uh, I've always, uh, on a running, on a defense against a running game, have always held my breath on getting big boy in there. And so this is a, this is a, a, a real statement in my mind uh, with uh, Dan and with Mike as to how we're going to address the run game when we get into the playoffs, which we're sure to have. The Cowboys don't want to get big boyed anymore. <laughs> I like the way he said that. Time now, 442 and 74 degrees for now. Still ahead, Louisiana records its latest earthquake, and officials say they have Garth Brooks to thank for it. We'll explain. But first, we're breaking down the popular hybrid choices, what they have to offer, and the bottom line when it comes to your wallet. And welcome back. It's 445. The unruly airline passenger who was duct taped by the flight crew has been sentenced to prison. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. You guys suck! And this morning's GMA First Look from midair meltdown to 60 days in jail. 23-year-old Maxwell Berry tied up with duct tape after groping two flight attendants and punching a third. Jordan Galarza, the flight attendant Barry hit, speaking exclusively with ABC affiliate WPLG outside the courtroom. He and the others taped Barry down. You can say the duct tape might have looked a bit barbaric. You can contend maybe we went a little too overboard. However, it worked perfectly and no one got hurt because of how we did what we did. He made an enemy out of everyone on that aircraft. Barry's attorney saying since the incident, he can't find a job. Mr. Barry is looking forward to putting this um, incident behind him. And coming up, at 7 a.m., we're going to hear from the president of the Association of Flight Attendants about what it's like to deal with these unruly passengers. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. All right, we're having some sort of technical issues, so we'll move on to our next story here. Gas price is still high, averaging 3.72 a gallon, and the uh, many are still asking themselves, is it a time for a hybrid? Time to consider one. 12 inch size Marilyn Moore shows us why hybrids can be worth the higher sticker price. Gas prices remain pumped up, so no surprise interest in hybrid vehicles is revved up. Upfront costs are often higher than the gas only versions, so do they save you money over the long haul? Hybrids have a gasoline powered engine and a battery powered electric motor that work together to optimize efficiency. We compared hybrid and non-hybrid versions of some popular vehicles and found that fuel savings could outweigh the upfront purchase price of some hybrid models. They found using a gas price of $4 a gallon and driving 12,000 miles a year, the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid will pay off its cost in four years. The Honda Accord Hybrid in three, the Hyundai Santa Fe Hybrid in only two. And should gas soar to five bucks a gallon, the Santa Fe's payback period could drop to one year. Beyond fuel economy, some hybrids even performed better. For example, the Hyundai Santa Fe Hybrid rides better, quieter, and shifts smoother than the gas-only Santa Fe. And it's quicker in our acceleration test, too. If a new hybrid isn't in your budget, consider used. When buying a used car, we say the sweet spot is to look for a well-maintained vehicle that's five years old. Not only is it going to cost less than a new vehicle, but it was also designed and built recently enough where you get modern safety and convenience features. Availability is still an issue, so new or used, be prepared to wait. If a hybrid isn't your thing, check out our website. We have Consumer Reports lists of cars that are a little easier on your gas dollars. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News.
And a quick look at the roads with TransGuide. Looking at flashing lights out there at I-35, at I-37. Uh, oh, it looks like the normal flashing lights over there in that area. But as far as most of the traffic, we are moving this morning. Well, the Empire is well represented this morning on yes. Star Wars Day. Mike Osterhage, she's wearing Stormtrooper uh, black and white. I'm wearing the Darth Vader tie. Uh, apparently, there were no good guy outfits available no, this morning. No, no. Well, uh, Baby Yoda. So. Oh, you've got her. You go to your baby. Baby. Oh, Aww. yes. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Okay, I missed that part. That's a good there guy. You go. yeah. There you go. Thank you. But yeah. they're they're really small. I should have. I didn't even think. I've got some Darth Vader cufflinks. I didn't even think about it. <gasps> yeah. Well, you gotta yes. wait an extra year now, Mike. <laughs> Yeah, maybe a calendar <laughs> alert. Can I run a home? reminder? Yeah. You're not going to run home for couplings. <laughs> uh, we've got a lot of humidity out there. Hopefully you're not dressed in, you know, Darth Vader robes because it's just too darn humid for all that. And perhaps a little bit of mist. So just be on the lookout here and there. Didn't see anything coming into to work this morning. We've got a, an OK breeze for this time of the morning, about uh, five, 10 miles per hour, a little bit stronger out there in Kerrville. And we also have a couple of wind gusts right now. Not anything off the charts, but it is going to be breezier, gustier throughout the rest of the afternoon and winds coming in here out of the southeast are doing nothing but just pulling in all this humidity and that's why dew point temperatures. Therefore, the relative humidity is so high. They'll drop slightly in the afternoon. The usual kind of cycle that we go through with the higher humidity in the morning, a little bit lower in the afternoon. Then it comes back up tomorrow morning again. We'll probably be dealing with some more mist and drizzle as well as a few showers around here and even a couple of thunderstorms tomorrow morning. So here's what is going on. First of all, throughout the rest of this morning, got that 10% in there just to take into account a little bit of mist, a little bit of drizzle here or there. Temperatures will stay steady in the low 70s, upper 60s in the hill country, and then we will climb into the upper 70s, get up to 81 at noon. See some sunshine peeking through later on this afternoon, and we will be topping off at 89. So it is going to be another very hot day. Normal high temperature is 83, obviously way above that, and that's just going to be the trend throughout the next couple of days. Here's the rapid update computer model doing a pretty good job depicting, you know, a little bit of some mist out there. Perhaps a, a slight sprinkle. I wouldn't count on anything, however, and that's going to be the situation even through mid morning. Now, tonight, we'll see some of those thunderstorms trying to develop again, kind of like was the situation last night. Most all of those, though, are going to be staying further up almost northwest of the hill country. But then tomorrow morning, we will have a few showers around here. And even during the day, a couple of thunderstorms are going to try and fire up, although the majority of those will still be up to the north. I think we'll still see some in our area, basically the northern half of our area, but we're going to be kind of on the tail end of this once again. So up there around Austin, north of there is where some of the heaviest rain is going to be. Now, we will have the chance for a couple of isolated, strong to potentially severe storms. This is tonight, and it's out there in northwestern portions of the hill country. But again, further up to the uh, north is where the majority of that is going to be. So forecast today, mist, drizzle, stubborn clouds again this morning. Same thing we've had the past couple of mornings, 80 at noon and then a high temperature today is going to make it up to 89, partly sunny skies. Then we'll have a couple of those showers and thunderstorms out to the northwest tonight, and we'll still have a few around tomorrow. So about a 30% chance for a few showers and thunderstorms around the area tomorrow. And then get ready because the heat's going to get cranked up. Hottest so far this year, if memory serves me correctly, is 97. So we're going to be close to that on Friday and then 100 on Saturday and Sunday. Those are the records, those small numbers there. So tying a record Saturday, close to it Sunday, and probably tying another record on Monday. We would argue those are not small numbers. Those are large numbers. Well, <laughs> the I agree, Mark. Is small, so. <laughs> I understand. Yes. All right, thank you, Mike. 452, about 74 degrees right now. And straight ahead, fans are getting into an insight into how the show, The Book of Boba Fett, was made all in honor of May 4th. A special premiere happening today at Disney Plus in honor of May 4th. And Garth Brooks just had an earth-shaking performance. <laughs> the latest on what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. In honor of May the 4th, affectionately known as Star Wars Day, Disney Gallery, The Book of Boba Fett, will premiere on Disney Plus today. It gives fans an insight into how the show is made. The cast and crew will reveal what went into making the show, and fans will get to see behind the scenes as well as never-before-seen footage. How do you know your concert is loud? It registers on the Richter scale. With over 100,000 fans singing along with Garth Brooks to the song Colin Baton Rouge at his concert at Louisiana State University's Tiger Stadium. Yeah! 
The ground was literally shaking. The small earthquake was captured by LSU seismograph, marking the second time in over three decades that Tiger Stadium registered a tremor from cheering fans. Before the show, Brooks had this prediction about Saturday's event. This is going to be loud. Looks like he was right. And celebrating birthdays today, sports reporter and former Dancing with the Stars host Aaron Andrews turns 44, while InSync's Lance Bass is 43. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. If you've ever been to a Garth Brooks concert, you're not surprised by any of that. No, probably not. It's a raucous occasion. <laughs> 456, about 74 degrees. A dire situation developing empty shelves at the food bank. Coming up in the next half hour of GMSA, we're going to be live with more on what is causing a decrease in donations. Spurs home games away from San Antonio are a step closer. More on the commissioner's court's preliminary decision. And checking the roads with Transguide. We'll be right back. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. A man tries to avoid an accident and ends up getting hit by a car. The details coming up, including his condition. And Americans voicing their views on the future of abortion rights. We're going to have the latest from Washington, D.C. We had storm, storm, storms way, way out last night uh, crossing the border. Any storms in the forecast for midweek? We'll talk to Mike Osterhage coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday, May 4th, that, Star Wars Day. <laughs> that's right. Thanks for joining us. It's a fun day here on GMSA. And it is. Yeah, we'll talk more about that later. But for now, let's talk about the nice humidity in the air. Mike, may the fourth be with you. Thank you very much. In my best lisp. And, and with you also. <laughs> also thank you. <laughs> with you also. There was never a response to that. May the, may the force be with you. Uh, 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 no. Yeah, well, I, I don't. Mean, I've heard some people and also with you. <laughs> I'm going to have to ask our Star Wars expert, Hardy Merritt. Like, oh, yes. You're welcome or anything like you're that. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, notice how you said nice humidity. Mm -hmm. Let's change the tune just to be grin and bear it. Yeah, that's the situation outside right now with all the uh, yeah, nice humidity and you may run into a little bit of mist 74 degrees. So we are more than 10 degrees above the normal average low temperature. Uh, a little bit of uh, maybe a, some mist or sprinkles being reported out there at the airport right now. Dew points down to uh, 71 degrees or still at 71 degrees, I should say. So plenty of uh, humidity out there. Nice humidity 89 for a high temperature later on today. And it is going to be a breezy wind out of the southeast about 10 20 miles per our gusting the aquifer dropped down another uh, decent chunk, half a foot, still stage two water restrictions. Mold did come down in yesterday's reading. Oak also came down, so hopefully we're getting to the, you know, finally getting rid of the, the oak pollen out there. As far as the humidity cloud cover, we've got a lot of moisture aloft in the atmosphere, the water vapor imagery. And so what this does is just kind of help out with some of the really stubborn clouds. We keep a lot of low stubborn clouds around here this morning, and then there'll be limited sunshine later on today. Kind of like what we had yesterday. There was some sun enough to get us up to 89. I think we'll have that situation again today. So cloudy, little mist, very warm. And the nice humidity out there, according to Stephanie, partly sunny skies and a couple of uh, thunderstorms once again, like yesterday, way out to the west and to the northwest. Some of those could be strong to potentially severe, but I think the majority are going to be out of our area. We may have a few of them. We're going to show you the uh, outlook for that because there is a very small chance for an isolated one or two of those out in our northwestern counties. A couple of storms around tomorrow. Actually, a slightly better chance, albeit 20, 30%, so not great. Then we are still going to be in the upper 80s. Then the heat turns on mid to upper 90s on Friday, and we are looking at hot temperatures, 100 over the weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, good morning, sir. Anything going on? Well, you know who the force is with? Definitely these drivers out on the roadways, or if not that, maybe some luck, because they're going to have the roads to themselves, especially if you have to head out in the next few moments. So let's get a wider look at Transguide and see how that morning is shaping up. 35 at 37, we see just some light traffic in there, and as we take that drive around town, 35 at Weedner, not necessarily spotting any problems, but it is looking pretty busy out there at 410 at Fredericksburg. Thankfully, this Wednesday morning has been off to a pretty decent start, although we did have some overnight construction that has since wrapped and we're going to get to that a little bit later on in the newscast, but everything is looking fine so far and we see the same thing right there on our map. Tons of green on the screen. Great way to start a Wednesday morning. So let's take a look at those travel times. If your destination is the Alamo City, the journey from Bernie right now, we are looking at 25 minutes in those eastbound lanes from I 10 to 81 in Bill 27 minutes on 
those southbound lanes. And 25 on 35 coming in from New Braunfels in those southbound lanes. So no trouble there and no trouble here on these trans guide cameras. But as I mentioned, there is still some construction to be on the lookout for for the remainder of the work week as well as the weekend. We're going to get to that a little bit later on in this newscast. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man trying to avoid an accident was hit by a car. It happened just after 10 last night on the northbound access road of 35 South, just before Military Drive. Now, police say he swerved to dodge something that was in the road when he was hit by a car. He was taken to University Hospital in stable condition. Officers do not believe alcohol was an issue in this accident. There are no charges pending. Now to a dire need for help. Empty shelves at the San Antonio Food Bank are sparking concerns, especially ahead of the summer months when kids are out of school. Jonathan Cotto joins us live with the details. And Jonathan, we know this is a serious situation. However, the good news is people can help here. That's right, Stephanie. That's definitely the good news here. It's the San Antonio Food Bank is counting with the community support in an effort of restocking the shelves inside of these warehouses. Let's show you what those shelves are looking like right now. Of course, some of the contributing factors to this issue is, of course, inflation and higher rent and gas prices that have been contributing to the increase of individuals requesting more help from the food bank. As we know, the food bank expects even more families will be in need in the coming months, especially since the kids are going to be out from school this summer. So they're definitely uh, the, the demand is definitely going to be increasing there. Now, some of the items needed are peanut butter, jellies, rice, beans and other non-perishable food items. Uh, those are definitely becoming immediate. The San Antonio Food Bank depends on the community partners like the United States Postal Service to stock the shelves, which it's important to mention there is an event uh, towards the later part of this month where they're hoping that the community will really step in and help and contribute to, to this cause right now. Now, Mark, Stephanie, millions of pounds of canned food is needed to, again, restock the shelves here at the San Antonio Food Bank. To learn more ways on how you can donate, you can visit KSAT.com. Reporting outside of the San Antonio Food Bank, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Well, yesterday wrapped up early voting for the May 7th election. A number of you took advantage of the opportunity to vote early. More than 47,000 people cast their ballots. If you missed out, don't worry. Coming up this Saturday is Election Day itself. And this is just a reminder on the ballot. Several proposals. One is for Northside ISD. The district is hoping voters passed a nearly billion dollar bond that will not involve a tax rate increase. For specific details on this proposal, you can check out the story on KSAT.com. In addition, there's also a sample ballot that you can look over before you head out to vote on Saturday. And the Silver and Black are a step closer this morning to moving some of their home games away from the AT&T Center. The request was to allow the team to move four of its home games for two seasons. Now, county commissioners only gave preliminary approval for one season. Spurs Sports and Entertainment says it's a way to build the regional fan base from Mexico to Austin. Legal counsel for the team addressed concerns that the Spurs could move to Austin. However, Judge Nelson Wolfs wasn't entirely convinced. As the chief legal officer and general counsel of all our companies, I, our commitment is we are staying in San Antonio. He has no authority to, it's the ownership that decides whether they're going to stay or not. Well, yesterday's vote only allows the county and legal team to negotiate an amendment to that deal. Final vote is expected to happen in two weeks. 507 right now this morning. Fallout continues following the leak of that Supreme Court draft opinion suggesting the court could overturn Roe versus Wade. The nearly half century old decision grants the right to abortions here in the U.S. The high court confirms the leaked documents are authentic and its chief justice is calling for an investigation. This as elected officials and everyday Americans are voicing their views on the future of abortion rights. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington with the latest. All eyes on the U.S. Supreme Court, where abortion rights demonstrations have swelled. I was happy that I saw um, the what they believe, what we believe, should be the decision moving forward. It's horrible. It, it's so depressing. It's shocking. I can't believe it. Stark divisions emerging after the website Politico published a leak of a draft opinion of a Mississippi abortion case Monday, revealing five justices appear ready to overturn Roe versus Wade. Referencing Roe, Justice Samuel Alito writing in the draft, it must be overruled, saying it was egregiously wrong. The court confirming the draft is authentic, adding it's not a final position. Chief Justice John Roberts calling that leak an egregious breach. 
The White House weighing in, saying a woman's right to choose is fundamental and pushing for Roe to be codified into federal law. If Roe is overturned, 26 states are certain or likely to ban or severely restrict abortion access. That's almost 36 million reproductive capable people who are going to be losing access to abortion care in the coming days, months, or years. And questions about what this debate could mean for the midterm election. Some analysts saying abortion rights advocates, young people, people of color, and suburban women could now be more motivated to vote. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. 509, about 74 degrees. Research underway right now could soon see lab-grown human milk for babies. The details a little later on GMSA. And still ahead, find out when the new untold true story of Weird Al is set to debut on Roku. That's interesting. And taking a look outside with live cam, starting off humid again at 74 degrees. And in addition to that, things will warm up later today. We'll be right back. Welcome back. In your morning consumer headlines, the home sharing platform Airbnb is reporting more than 100 million bookings during the first quarter of the year. Those numbers combined with an increase in its average nightly rate of $168 led to $1.5 billion in revenue for the company. That's up 70% from a year ago. The company also noted its fastest growing category is reservations of 28 days in length or more. And scientists are developing a new type of lab-grown human milk for babies, BioMilk. A startup based in North Carolina says it's on track to create infant milk generated with human tissue. So it's made with cells from donated mother's milk along with breast tissue. Now the lab then grows those cells and incubates them in a reactor that mimics the environment found in a breast. The company's co-founder says she got the idea after struggling to produce enough breast milk for her first child. The company hopes it will be available in about three years. It's now 5.13 on your Wednesday morning. And still to come, a preview of Weird Al, the Al Yankovic story. But next, Instagram experimenting with a TikTok-like full screen. We'll show you. Lay down your head and show me if you like it. Lend me your ears and read me like a book. This conversation, it strikes me. The Versace Bright Crystal Gift Set. At Macy's, the fragrance destination. Psst, psst. Allergies don't have to be scary. Spraying Flonase daily stops your body from overreacting to allergens all season long. Psst, psst. Flonase, all good. More and more cat parents are feeding tastefuls from Blue Buffalo because it's tasty and healthy. Wow. And now Blue Tastefuls comes in single-serve portions. Just snap it, peel it, pop it, chop it. Pick up Tastefuls singles and find out why one taste is all it takes. 517, welcome back. Instagram testing a new feature they say will bring video more front and center. ABC's Andrew Dembert has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, Instagram is running a test that will make the app look more like TikTok. Users will see full screen vertical home feeds. Comments, captions, and likes will be placed on the top of the post instead of below. The head of Instagram says it's meant to bring more video front and center. Twitter is testing a new way for users to limit who sees a tweet. Twitter Circle allows you to pick up to 150 people and allows only those in the circle to see what you post. Other users who create a circle can see who's in it. No word on when it could go live. And Microsoft Edge is now the number two browser for desktop users worldwide, officially passing Apple Safari. Edge holds just 10% of the market share. Google Chrome holds a commanding lead over all other browsers with nearly two thirds of the market. Can't keep up with all the browser news? Don't worry, we're keeping tabs on them. Those are your tech bites. It's cute. <laughs> we'll ask Stephen about it. You like his jokes today? I liked his tie. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, Something. it was a nice tie. There you go. <laughs> oh, well, you know, it was out. That was okay. I've heard better jokes here in the studio. 
Yeah, I'll say that. Uh, was just talking to Mark right now. It looks a little bit busier than usual from these Transguide cameras. There's I-10 at Hackberry. Let's get a wider look from Transguide 35 North at Loop 410. Yeah, you can see from that shot, we are seeing more folks than usual for a Wednesday morning this early at least. Hopefully grabbing that cup of coffee, giving themselves plenty of time to get the day started. But no need to rush out the door because no issues have been detected just yet. But let's get that wide look at the map because we are seeing just some quiet roads here in the metro area. Looking busy, but thankfully nothing that's going to cause any slowdowns this early in the in the moment. But let's talk about what you can expect here for the commute because there is going to be some overlay work taking place off Loop 410 over on the west side of San Antonio. Keep in mind that is current, but that should be wrapping up on Monday, May 9th. It's overnight, so 8 in the evening to 5 in the morning is when we can expect that closure of the full northbound main lane at US 90 to West Military. Of course, all this information is posted on our website. That's kset.com slash traffic. I don't believe we have the QR code just now, but we'll get to that a little bit later later on in this newscast, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you very much, Stephen. Good morning, Mike. Good, Good morning. morning. Beautiful uh, as the sun tried to squeeze through yesterday. Didn't see a whole lot of it. No. Yeah. A little bit more in the afternoon, but this is from uh, Mr. McClellan over there, Woodlawn Lake. Gorgeous oh, yeah. picture. Wow. And we're going to be seeing pretty much the same situation then later on today. we got a lot of clouds out there. Did anybody see any mist this morning? I saw some droplets on the on, on coming into work. On, on windshield? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I, so windshield, yeah. I did. One or I should. I'm looking over there towards you. I should be looking down. So, okay, one or two of them then. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, <laughs> don't look down at me too much. <laughs> this whole Brady Bunch, you know, triple box here. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, watch out for a little bit of mist or drizzle around the area this morning. Maybe even a, a light little sprinkle, few and far between at best. Over there at the airport, it looks as though the roads are pretty dry. Uh, humidity temperatures are still sky high. 10 degrees above normal on average right now. Everybody's in the uh, 70s, obviously with the small exception out there in Lost Maples. We are going to be staying steady, maybe fluctuating a degree or two this morning. 10% chance chance for again, maybe a little bit of mist, a drop or two as Stephen was talking about in your windshield, and that's going to be the case through the rest of the morning commute. Then late morning, we will start to creep into the mid and upper 70s, hit 81 by noon, some sunshine, then later on today and 89 for a high temperature. Also, the wind is going to be picking up. We're going to have southeasterly wind 10, 20 miles per hour and then gusting on top of that at times. As far as rain, now this model is doing a pretty good job. One or two of those little light sprinkles, uh, some mist drizzle out there. That's going to be the case through the rest of the morning. A lot of stubborn clouds around this morning like we had yesterday, and then we'll start to see some peaks of sunshine. Now, tonight, like last night, now last night it was further on down to the south, but this time it's going to be further northwest where we see some of these showers and thunderstorms developing, and most will stay up there to the north. They're not going to be very long-lived. However, when they do pop up, there could be one or two of them that get strong or potentially severe. Then then as we go into tomorrow, starting off a couple of uh, showers, even a thunderstorm around the area, and we'll see more developing throughout the day. But again, the majority of these are going to be further up there to the north, and they will continue to sweep across to the east. Again, most of those really strong ones further up north. We're kind of on the tail end of things here, and then that's going to move on out. Now, as far as tonight's concern, there, like I said, that chance for one or two storms to become strong to potentially severe high winds and small hail are going to be the biggest threats and then tomorrow we do have the chance for one or two of those isolated strong to severe storms the majority so you can see that darker shade of orange and pink is up there further to the northeast. So that's where most of those will be. We'll just kind of be on the tail end of it, but we'll have to kind of watch out in the afternoon for one of those to be on the uh, one or two to be on the strong side. An isolated tornado can't be totally ruled out. Not very likely, though. 80 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 89. Just like yesterday, we'll have enough sunshine squeezing through to get us up into the upper 80s, still roughly six degrees, five, six degrees above normal. And then tonight we have that chance for a little bit of a uh, couple of showers, thunderstorms off to the northwest, little chance that they would become strong to severe. And tomorrow, roughly a 30% chance for one or two of those showers, thunderstorms, a couple in the morning and then in the afternoon, one or two of those may become strong to severe. After that, Rain chances go out of the picture and heat gets turned up. 96 Friday, 100 Saturday, Sunday. Hmm, lovely. Yes. <laughs> from just in time for Mother's Day. So far, she said nice humidity today and lovely temperatures this mm -hmm. weekend. So yes, yes. Time now, 523 and 74 degrees for now. Attorney for Johnny Depp have rested their case. What's next in the celebrity trial that's been full of twists and turns?
And today in entertainment news, we have the latest from a high profile celebrity trial. And first look at a truly weird movie. Here's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. Johnny Depp's attorneys have rested their case in the actor's defamation trial against his ex-wife, actress Amber Heard. Depp claims Heard's 2018 op-ed caused him to lose work in Hollywood. His lawyers called more than two dozen witnesses over 13 days. Many testified the couple had explosive fights. Heard's team began its case with a psychologist who testified she diagnosed Heard with post-traumatic stress disorder caused by intimate partner violence. That contradicts the testimony of a psychologist called by Depp's team. Hope you guys are ready for this. The first teaser trailer is out for Weird, the Al Yankovic story, a combination biopic and spoof of biopics with Daniel Radcliffe as the prince of parody. Anyone got an accordion? The untold true story of Weird Al debuts this fall on the Roku channel. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Yes, definitely recognize Daniel Radcliffe. I didn't until he said something. Mm -hmm. Wow. 527, about 74 degrees. And still to come, a burned down building will soon be branded new apartments. It's National Star Wars Day coming up. We're going to tell you about what May 4th is all about. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, starting humid, about 74 degrees out there. Uh, it's turning up <laughs> to be a warm week this week, especially towards the weekend. And a good morning to you. It is Wednesday, uh, May 4th. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool. Case at 12 in the Star Wars font, if yes. there was such a thing. Yes. Kind of cool on I this. I want to make sure I move out of the way so we can appreciate this. It's yeah. National Star Wars Day, and May the 4th yes. be with you. Yes, thanks for joining us today. And we're starting off May 4th very humid again. Let's check in with Mike. I said 4th, and I keep meaning to say force, Mike. Yes. Oh. And we asked, what was the response? The response was and the, you, the force with all of us or may, may the force be with all of us. You, you could say you too or may or the force too. be with all of us. No. Oh. If you were really, really, really That's into Star Wars. Wars. <laughs> Our resident Star Wars expert in the booth. Yeah, uh, Steph was talking about lots of clouds, lots of humidity out there. And it almost looked like in that other uh, live cam shot that there may be a drop on the lens. Don't be surprised if you see a slight bit of mist, drizzle, even a, a sprinkle, brief little sprinkle, but it's not going to amount to much of anything. Obviously, nothing is showing up on, on radar right now, nor is anything being reported around the area. 74 here in town. That number, dew point, 71. Very high above 70. A ton of humidity out there. You can just about cut it with a knife and wind out of the southeast at 8 miles per hour. Later on tonight, very similar situation, not only starting off, but then into the evening hours. We do have a chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms to pop up in northwest portions of the hill country. So from Del Rio up to Rock Springs, uh, just about in toward Lakey, there is a chance for an isolated strong to potentially severe storm. Large hail, strong winds would be the biggest threats with that, but the majority of everything is going to be further up to the northwest, but there is still that very small chance for that later on tonight. And then once again tomorrow, very small chance for an isolated strong to severe storm. I'm going to show you that in a moment. Mold is moderate. Oak really dropped down from the previous day's reading. I think we're finally getting rid of all of that. Grass and pecan are also on the low side. 81 today at noon. A lot of stubborn clouds around this morning. Again, some mist, drizzle, a little sprinkle here and there, and then a high temperature up to 89. It is going to be on the breezy side with those winds out of the southeast, 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusty. So chance of rain later on tonight. Tomorrow, slightly better shot of rain. Then heat gets cranked up and yes we are still looking at triple digit temperatures over the weekend details in just a couple of minutes traffic authority Stephen Cavazos what's going on sir good morning Mike right now we have been spotting basically quiet roads uh, but we are noticing a few more vehicles out there than usual so just remember to take it easy let's get a wider look at trans guy there's 281 at Nakoma and we are seeing us 90 at 36 did have some overnight construction and that has already wrapped so that shouldn't really cause any problems for your early drive but keep in mind there will still be closures throughout the day and we're going to get to that a little bit later on in the newscast but thankfully the commute this morning at this hour is looking pretty smooth just remember to watch out let's go ahead and take you in here to 35 right there at 281 in those northbound lanes we do have a stall to be on the lookout for now just as a reminder anytime you see those flashing lights emergency lights make sure to move over or slow down for that stranded motor motorist and of course uh, uh, first responders that are working to help them out so just be prepared check your vehicles as well but no need to rush especially if you're traveling into the 
Alamo City. Looking pretty green from Seguin on I-10 in those westbound lanes. 22 coming in from Lavernia right down those 80s off 87 in the northbound lanes in 28 minutes on 37 heading up from Floridasville. So no trouble there, but we'll continue to watch the, uh, the roads closely and give you those updates right here on GMSA. Mark stuff. Thank you, Stephen. A downtown street corner has become a crime scene as San Antonio police investigate a stabbing there. They say it was the violent end to an argument between two men. Katrina Weber is on West Houston at North Medina with a live report. And Katrina, we understand police have someone in custody. Well, that is right, Stephanie. Uh, a little while ago, we saw them talking with a man here who was in handcuffs. Now, police tell us that he's someone who a witness pointed out as being the person who stabbed that man. They say they're still trying to sort it all out. Uh, this is the scene right here right now. They have this corner all blocked off. Police responded to a 911 call around 430 this morning. They found a man here with a stab wound in his chest. This again is the corner of West Houston and North Medina, right next to the offices for Via Metropolitan transit. A police tells the victim who appears to be in his 30s is in critical condition at a hospital right now. They say that he told them he got into a fight with another man over some property and that's when he was attacked with a knife. The officers tell us they did find the knife here at the scene. Uh, again, they are not officially calling that man who they had in handcuffs a suspect at this point, but police say they do plan to talk to him more. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. CPS Energy sending out an alert warning customers of scammers posing as the utility, threatening to turn off the power if they don't pay up. They want to remind everyone CPS Energy will not demand payment over the phone to prevent disconnection. The expected heat this weekend leading some people to wonder if the power grid is going to keep up with demand. ERCOT or the Electric Reliability Council of Texas helps manage the grid and they are adamant the power will stay on. The agency has already asked power plants in the region to postpone any planned outages. They anticipate the rise in demand to take place between Friday through Monday. And now to your money and a major decision affecting all Americans today, a decision to raise interest rates in hopes of bringing down prices while avoiding a recession. ABC's Andrea Fujii has the details. This morning, Wall Street and Main Street bracing for a rate hike by the Federal Reserve. The Fed expected to raise the short-term interest rate by a half percentage point, double the usual amount, and the sharpest rate hike since the year 2000 as it tries to manage inflation. That means it will cost more to borrow money for big ticket items like a car or a home. This as businesses around the country are looking to hire. Employers posted a record 11.5 million job openings in March, meaning the country now has two job openings for every person who's unemployed. With job candidates in control, many are leaving their current position in search of a bigger paycheck. This is me 15 minutes after quitting my corporate job. My name's Andrew. I'm an ICU nurse and I just quit my job. Deemed the great resignation, more than 47 million Americans quit their jobs in 2021, a record. And the trend shows no sign of letting up. Americans post-pandemic want a change. Coming out of the pandemic, I want work to fit around my life. And in many cases, those would involve a job change. And it's now easier than ever to jump from one job to another. Working from home was a Kickstarter for the great resignation. If you're leaving a job previously, that means uprooting. But now you, you toss one laptop to the side and then bring in a new one and you're logging into a new portal. Workers are also feeling more empowered. Some are unionizing, including those at 50 Starbucks locations. In response to market conditions, the company is now offering more training for new hires, raises for all workers, and enhanced benefits to tenured workers not in the union. As for the interest rate hike, the Fed announcement is expected this afternoon. And two more rate hikes could be coming this summer as the Feds try not to spark a recession. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. U.S. Marshals Service has released new photos of a vehicle they say an Alabama corrections officer and an escaped inmate were last seen in last month. Marshals Service say Vicki White and Casey White, who are not related, were seen in a gold or copper colored 2007 Ford Edge in April 29th in Rogersville, Alabama, with unknown Alabama license plates. A warrant's been issued for Vicki White, who is now charged with permitting or facilitating escape in the first degree. 
U.S. Marshals Service offering up to $5,000 for information leading to her capture. They're also offering a reward of up to $10,000 for information leading to Casey White's arrest. The Trump Organization has reached an agreement with Washington, D.C. to settle a case concerning former President Trump's 2017 inauguration. Now, according to a person familiar with the settlement, the Trump Organization will pay $400,000 to settle with the D.C. Attorney General of General's office over allegations it misspent money for raised for the inauguration. Now, the Presidential Inaugural Committee will pay $350,000. The AG sued in 2020, alleging the committee wasted a million dollars by overpaying for inaugural events. 539, about 74 degrees. And there's a pet ready to be adopted and a later on maybe dressed up as a Star Wars character today. We're going to check in with the Animal Defense League coming up. And next to Big Day for Star Wars fans, you'll hear May the 4th be with you a lot today. How some fans are using their love for the franchise to be a force for good for others. And taking a look outside with live cam, nice and humid. Maybe not the day to wear a very thick Star Wars costume. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 542. So we've been waiting an entire year to say this. And now here we go. May the 4th be with you. Today, May 4th, of course, is National Star Wars Day. And bringing us closer to the force, here's ABC's Will Gantz. In today's Tech Bytes, Instagram is running a test that will make the app look more like TikTok. Users will see full screen vertical home feeds, comments, captions, and... That's not the Aww, right story. So we're going to task our producer <laughs> to try to come up with it here before the end of this hour. Okay, right now, 542, running in the 70s. Coming up next, we are checking in with the Animal Defense League, who has a pet ready to go home with you. And we're here with Julie from ADL, and you've got Ginger in your arms yes. here, and she's so beautiful. <laughs> she's a beautiful girl, and she's a big puppy. She's a little, little more than an armful, sure. but she's still a puppy. She's only six months old. Oh, wow. Um, she's a little nervous, yeah. but she is so, so sweet. She's great with other pets, and as soon as she gets to know her person, yeah. she warms right up. So she's, she's a good girl. So gentle, and she's just, just been kind of checking out the room, checking mm -hmm. out the scenery, but she's She's going to get pretty big, right? I would say um, since she's six months old, she weighs around 38 pounds right now. Okay. So I would anticipate around a 50 pound pet. Okay. But she, and she's really soft, really sweet. We, um, we have her marked as an Australian cattle mix. Okay. And just really great with other dogs, loving, sweet, good girl. Okay. So she's going to be good pet, good with kids, everybody. Perfect. Perfect. And she's ready for adoption now? She is ready right now. We're okay. ready to get her out. Awesome. Um, into a home, a loving home. Sure. So um, we're doing we are partnering with the Bissell Pet Foundation. Okay. We're really proud, excited, and honored. Um, so that means that we are able to offer all of our pets six months and older for $25. Oh, that's huge. Yeah, it's a great, great deal to get these babies into homes. And that means Ginger qualifies because she is exactly six months. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope I hope Ginger finds a home. She deserves it. So beautiful. <laughs> and, Wiggly uh, girl. We'll put the information there up on your screen. 11 3 at Nacogdoches Road, the Paul Jolly Center for Pet Adoptions. The number is 210-655-1481. Make sure and give Ginger a home. Julie, thank you so much. Thank you. A lot of personality, that oh, Ginger. I love her coat, too. Yeah, she's beautiful color. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. and a, yeah, very cute. I think she thinks she's human, one of those dogs. It's very possible. Yeah. 547 on your Wednesday. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. I saw things moving at I-10 and Callahan. Yeah, things have been moving throughout the morning, and we are seeing just some mist on the uh, cameras here from TransGuide. Let's get a wider look. Now, uh, this shot really not giving us a good look at it because it's a little pixelated down there, but you can make it out here on the camera from TransGuide. So just remember to drive safe this morning. We're not really spotting any issues that would cause delays for your early morning drive, but we'll continue to watch the roads closely, but make sure you do the same. So let's go ahead and take you a look at the map because as I mentioned, no issues as we're inching closer to that 6 a.m. hour, but let's go ahead and bring it in right there to I-35 North end at 281. That's all still being reported by TxDOT, so just make sure you move over our slowdown. And as you can see, based on our map, we do have a few construction spots out there, so you got to make sure you drive with caution today. And as well, we want you to be prepared Paired I-37 over in Atascosa County. There is some bridge work that is taking place. Keep in mind that is current, but should be wrapping up tomorrow. According to TechSouth, that will take place at 9 in the morning and wrap around 5 in the
the afternoon. Drivers, that's when you can expect a single northbound main lane closure at the Atascosa River. So again, that is later this morning, so make sure you plan your commute and make sure to stay focused on the roads. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Yep, good idea. Thank you. So 10 Callahan, a couple of drops yep. on the, uh, the lenses we and up by the airport reporting within the hour. A little bit of some light sprinkles and I think there's a, well, there was one little drop right there on the lens. Also up around New Braunfels, Castroville, Kelly are some of the reporting areas that are indicating some sprinkles, some light mist drizzle out there. Visibility has dropped down to three miles Castroville. So some fog is showing up. Same thing Port SA and then over there uh, up I-10 toward Bernie as well as Kerrville. And with some of that fog, a little bit of mist. So the roads are going to be damp this morning. Just take it easy. And, you know, in a situation like this where you get that little bit, you know, one or two drops on the roads, you got the oil, you got the dust on the roads. That's when they're the can be the slipperiest. So watch that as you head out and elsewhere, some fog along the coastal plain, the Grange and Victoria, and then also out there around Uvalde with all this humidity that's just getting pumped on in here. So we will have 10% chance for mist or a light sprinkle, something like that. Just the nuisance sort of uh, precipitation and plenty of clouds. Temperatures are going to be staying in the well, steady low 70s, upper 60s parts of the hill country. We'll finally make it up to the upper 70s and 81 degrees at noon. Wind is going to start to pick up today out of the southeast. Gusty 10, 20 miles per hour, gusting 25 miles per hour at times. Some sunshine later on this afternoon, enough to get us up to 89. Again, still on the breezy side now. This model's doing a great job picking up a couple of light little sprinkly showers around this morning and stubborn clouds all morning long. Tonight, we will start to see a couple of thunderstorms developing off there to the northwest. A similar situation, different location, a little further up to the north than what it was last night, but one or two of those may become strong too severe. They're not going to last very long. They're going to stay up there to the northwest. And tomorrow, we may start off with a few showers around the area, even a thunderstorm. Then throughout the day, more are going to get going. But notice how the majority of those are further up to the north. This will all sweep to the east. We'll kind of be on the tail end of it here in town and then going up I-35 and that's where most of these are going to be up north of Austin over there toward College Station. Then that's going to finally get on out of here. Now as far as the severe threat, a couple of them may become strong to severe out there around Rock Springs heading up in north of the hill country and even around Del Rio. High winds and hail are the biggest threats. Then tomorrow we've got the northeastern half, if you will, of our viewing area. Again, we're on the tail end of this. The better chance for anything severe is further up there to the northeast, but we just have to be on the lookout throughout the afternoon for one or two of those thunderstorms to be on the stronger side tomorrow. Morning temperatures are going to be staying about well, except the Friday morning, but overall almost uh, 10 degrees above normal and same thing with the high temperatures and yep. We are still looking that just kind of drives the point home with that sort of uh, pinkish color there for those hundreds. That's just hot this weekend. All right, forecast today. A lot of uh, stubborn clouds around this morning. Some mist, a little bit of drizzle here and there. 80 at noon. Most of the cloudy skies. We'll see some sunshine peeking on through later on today to get us up to 89 degrees. And then those couple of showers, thunderstorms off to the northwest tonight. And tomorrow we'll have a few of them around as well, especially in the afternoon. Probably just still going to be a damp commute tomorrow and then in the morning, I should say. Then Friday, 96, 100, Saturday, Sunday. All those numbers from Friday through Monday are going to be really close to their respective records. I was going to say respective normals. I hope not. No, no. Yeah, yeah, way above normal. Oh, yeah, normal being 84. So Okay, all right. Be prepared. Thank, thank you very much, Mike. We have good news, folks. We are circling back to our Star Wars story. That's right. Let's go ahead and check in the story with Will Gans. Goodbye, old friend. May the force be with you. A long time ago in a movie theater, not so far away, Star Wars burst onto the big screen, forever changing the galaxy as we know it. Since then, 12 films in total have been released in theaters, and countless spin-offs and series and characters have become a force to be reckoned with. You stay right here. Stay. Don't move. And today, Star Wars superfans celebrate their favorite film franchise. These are the boys in the band, the cantina musicians, the Biff musicians. Steve Sansweet holds the Guinness World Record for biggest Star Wars collection, with more than half a million unique collectibles at his Rancho Obi-Wan in Northern California. And Justin Sonfield is the Legion commanding officer of the 501st Legion. 
The 501st Legion is is a, a worldwide Star Wars costuming organization. Um, we're the bad guys, and we like to call ourselves the bi- bad guys doing good because we create these 100% movie accurate costumes, uh, and then go on troops, comic cons, but also libraries, hospitals, and do it all for charity. Justin, who's also the CEO of a major brand, fell in love with the film franchise at age seven, and now his whole family is in on it. And today, on this International Star Wars Day, members of the 501st Legion will be heading to local libraries and hospitals across the country to bring the force to those who need it most. So when people ask what's it really about, for me, it's just putting smiles on people's faces, young and old. You can also celebrate May the 4th with some sweet deals, 30% off some Star Wars toys at Target, Walmart also offering discounts on certain clothes, home items, toys, and movies. Will Gans, ABC News, a galaxy far, far away. Steph, got to be honest, I was going to be surprised if Will didn't do something like that. (laughs) More in our next hour, including a way for you to interact about your favorite Star Wars moments. Yes, also next, an idea for Mother's Day. How about a huge pear-shaped diamond? We're going to tell you how much it will set you back. All right, check this out. If you're still looking for a Mother's Day gift and you're loaded, here's an idea. A 228 karat pear shaped diamond known as the Rock will hit the auction block next week. It's one of the largest white diamonds ever to go up for auction. Christie's estimates right now are putting this at a sale between 20 and 30 million dollars. Mike, you want to go ahead and put a bid in now? Sure, I already did. Okay. Yeah, they didn't take five bucks though. Oh, they didn't? No. Okay. Try 15. They wanted six. Yeah. Right now, it is 557, about 74 degrees ahead in the next hour. It's being called a miracle in China, a young girl rescued from the rubble of a collapsed building. We'll have more details. Transcad right now, we have a few droplets on the lens out there. Not big downpours, but showers here or there. Very, very light. We'll check in with both, both Mike and Steven coming up. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. The shelves inside the warehouses at the San Antonio Food Bank are starting to collect the dust. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you all about the food shortage and what's causing it, and more importantly, how you can help. I'm ABC's Justin Finch in Washington, where crowds have been gathering following the leak of that Supreme Court draft opinion on abortion rights. What the White House and demonstrators are saying this morning. And may the 4th be with you. We are celebrating Star Wars Day here on GMSA. And outside with Lime Cam, a sprinkle or two here or there. We had big storms way to the west last night, and Mike says we might see a repeat performance overnight tonight. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is National or International Star Wars Day, May the 4th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you're having a fun morning so far outside. Kind of muggy to start our day. It really is. We'll see if there's anything more significant than a sprinkle or two this morning, Mike Osterhage. Mm, no, not really. Uh, okay. Just a lot of lightness. Uh, you know, it's that nuisance kind of stuff, though, that makes the roads just damp enough. Um, so just take it easy as you drive because we've been seeing nothing but a couple of sprinkles on on the lens. Uh, there may be one or two of them out there by the airport. It had been reporting some light sprinkles. Same thing around New Braunfels, uh, Castroville, Kelly. Also, we've got bit of uh, fog. Castroville, Bernie Stage, Kerrville. Both of those numbers, uh, Kerrville and Bernie Stage, dropped down uh, one mile in visibility just in the past uh, couple of minutes. And then also going out 90, we're running into some of that fog. A hint of it, lower visibility out there at the airport. And just uh, again, not a lot of thick fog or really, really uh, low visibility, but kind of scattered about the area. And with those low clouds out there, you may run into some of that mist. Mold is on the moderate side. It dropped down from the previous day's reading and everything else is on the low side, including oak. Throughout the morning, temperatures, which are in the mid and low 70s right now, are going to stay pretty steady this morning. We'll have some mist, call it drizzle, maybe a light, light sprinkle or two. Nothing of any uh, consequence except for just making the roads damp this morning. 81 degrees at noon and then a high temperature today. We'll have enough sunshine squeezing through like yesterday to get up to 89 degrees. It's also going to be windy. Winds out of the southeast 10 to 20 miles per hour and gusting from there. And then tonight, sort of like last night, 
we will see a couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms developing well off to the northwest and for extreme northwest portions of our uh, viewing area, Rock Springs, Del Rio, and then just grazing western Kerr County and Real counties. One or two of those storms could become strong, potentially severe. High winds and hail would be the biggest threats with that, but the majority is going to be further off out of our viewing area. Tomorrow we also have a very small chance for a couple of thunderstorms, maybe on the strong side, and then the heat gets cranked up. And yep, we are still looking at the infamous 100 degree readings this weekend. Don't know if that's good news or not. Anyway, details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on, sir? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, we'll definitely make sure to remind drivers, keep a lookout and make sure to watch out for those damp roads. But thankfully, uh, we're not seeing any problems just yet here on these TransGuide cameras. It's been a pretty easy morning uh, for a lot of these folks that are getting their day started, but we are seeing a little bit more activity out on the roadways than we normally would. Not sure why, but just remember to drive safe and be kind to other drivers out there. Let's take a look around town 37 at Jones Avenue. I 10 at the Y things are moving for this Wednesday morning, but be on the lookout because we still have some stalls to talk about some new ones that we are actually adding to our list. This is the latest one off I 35 southbound right there at loop 410. It's not causing any issues, but we see that trend continue on the southeast side right there at loop 410 eastbound at Southton Road. So check those vehicles and remember move over or slow down. Wide look at the map doesn't show any trouble and we're not spotting trouble as far as those travel times. Let's take a look if your destination is San Antonio 37 Pleasanton. We're looking at a pleasant drive with 28 minutes in those northbound lanes. We're also looking at uh, 19 minutes coming in from Highway 90 and kept from Cashville and your arrival from Lytle to the Alamo City should be in about 16 minutes if you're traveling up I 35 northbound. So we're looking like we're in good shape, but as always make sure you have your phone handy because we do have some construction spots that we're going to get to, but that's going to be coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. A developing story that we are following this morning. One man is fighting for his life after a shooting at a southeast side apartment complex. This all happened last night on Bulmer Drive near Dollar Hyde Avenue. Police tell us that four men were talking in the parking lot when one of them pulled out a gun. The person with the gun started shooting upwards towards the apartment building, hitting a 20 year old man in the head. He's currently at the hospital in critical condition. Right now, it's unclear if the victim was the intended target or if he was just hit in the crossfire. As of this morning, no arrests have been made. Officers tell us that they are looking for a beige Hyundai Elantra with broken windows. Now to a dire need for help. Empty shelves at the San Antonio Food Bank sparking fresh concerns, especially ahead of the summer months when kids are out of school. Jonathan Cotto joins us live right now with those details. And Jonathan, we understand the good news, though, is that people can help. That's right, Stephanie. It's a dire situation and people can most certainly help. The San Antonio Food Bank is actually hoping to counter the community support to address the food shortage and the increase in demand. But let's take a look at what the situation inside the San Antonio Food Bank is looking like. Empty shelves from top to bottom. And food bank reps say inflation, high rent and gas prices, high gas prices have contributed to the increase of people requesting assistance. This comes as thousands of students whose families rely on the food bank's assistance are preparing for summer break. Reason why the food bank is in dire need of help, they're definitely anticipating the demand to increase even more in the months to come. The food bank's chief development officer, Michael Guerra, says when the need is going up and food is going down, food drives are really important. Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive put on by the U.S. Postal Service will be happening Saturday, May 14th. It's an opportunity for local letter carriers to collect food from home porches. And if you're wondering what's needed, well, items like peanut butter, jellies, rice, beans, and other non-perishable items. Now, according to representatives here at the San Antonio Food Bank, millions of pounds of canned items are needed to stock the shelves inside the warehouse in time for summer. But of course, to learn more ways on how you can help and contribute, you can head on over to KSET.com. Reporting from the San Antonio Food Bank, Jonathan Cotto. KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Jonathan. Happening today, the National Transportation Safety Board will begin investigating a deadly plane crash. Two people were killed. Two others are recovering after the crash. The plane went down near Panama City not long after taking off yesterday afternoon. Right now, it's unclear what caused the crash. And it's being called a miracle in China. After 79 hours, rescue crews were finally able to pull a young girl from the rubble of a collapsed building. Now they had to move beams and they had to move slabs to get near that girl. She was the ninth survivor to be pulled out alive from that rubble. 
This morning, fallout continues following the leak of that Supreme Court draft opinion suggesting the court could soon overturn Roe versus Wade. The near half century old decision grants the right to abortion in the U.S. The high court confirms the leaked documents are authentic and its chief justice is calling for an investigation. ABC's Justin Finch is in Washington this morning with the latest. Good morning. The abortion debate appears red hot. Crowds on both sides gathering at the Supreme Court and across the country raising their voices. Some seeing that leak as a sign of victory. Others fearing the loss of what they call an essential right. All eyes on the U.S. Supreme Court where abortion rights demonstrations have swelled. I was happy that I saw um, the what they believe what we believe should be the decision moving forward. It's horrible. It, it's so depressing. It's shocking. I can't believe it. Stark divisions emerging after the website Politico published a leak of a draft opinion of a Mississippi abortion case Monday, revealing five justices appear ready to overturn Roe versus Wade. Referencing Roe, Justice Samuel Alito writing in the draft, it must be overruled, saying it was egregiously wrong. Chief Justice John Roberts calling that leak an egregious breach. How dare they tell a woman what she can do and cannot do with her own body? The White House weighing in, saying a woman's right to choose is fundamental. In a new ABC News Washington Post poll, 7 in 10 people say that decision should be left to a woman and her doctor. If Roe is overturned, 26 states are certain or likely to ban or severely restrict abortion access. And questions about what this debate could mean for the midterm election. Some analysts saying abortion rights advocates, young people, people of color and suburban women could now be more motivated to vote. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Texas Group is pushing to stop a sales tax that only applies to half the Texas population. The tampon sales tax, as it's known, is pushing state lawmakers to consider menstrual hygiene products a medical necessity and therefore exempt from sales tax. The group Texas Menstrual Equity Coalition is working with Austin State Representative Donna Howard on the bill. It has already failed three times, however, in the recent legislative session and moved to committee, but was not scheduled for hearing. Those behind the repeal say the move is about helping low-income families and bring equity for women. State Representative Donna Howard says she plans on filing the bill again this November. She is also pushing a bill that would exempt diapers for both adults and children from sales tax. Federal Reserve wraps up its latest two-day meeting this afternoon and investors are looking to see just how much interest rates will be going up. With record job openings fueling more inflation fears, many economists are expecting a half-point hike. That would be the biggest in more than 20 years. Rebounding travel has led to revenues doubling for Airbnb. The rental booking site also saw its first quarter loss cut to $19 million. And it is reporting strong bookings for both the summer and the holidays at the end of the year. Microsoft Edge, now the number two browser for desktop users worldwide, officially passing Apple's Safari browser. Edge holds just a 10% of the market share. Google Chrome holds a commanding lead over all other browsers with nearly two thirds of the market. Instagram is running a test that will make the app look more like TikTok. Users will see full screen vertical home feeds. Comments, captions, and likes will be placed on top of the post instead of below. The head of Instagram says it is meant to bring video more front and center. Right now, it's 611, about 74 degrees. And we have much more to come up on GMSA. Coming up a little later, we're going to tell you why experts say a clean home could be key to a better mood. Makes sense to me. And just ahead, get out your lightsabers. We're talking all things Star Wars on this May the 4th. And taking a look outside with a live cam, muggy and misty in some areas. Be careful on your way out the door. We'll be right back. Time check, 6.15 on your May the 4th. A little misty out there, so let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavasso. Is the force with drivers this morning, Stephen? Yeah, uh, so far, I think so. I think uh, Yoda would be proud. But let's get a look and see what we can expect right now for this May the 4th. Right now, traffic looking a little bit busier than usual off 281 at Bassey. 90 at Zazamora, you can see that traffic is moving as we are inching closer to that busy time that is rush hour. So let's get a look at the map and see what you can expect because although we haven't spotted crashes or slowdowns 
just yet, we do see stalls. And this is the newest one right over here off of I-10 in those eastbound lanes right at Culebra. So just remember to watch out anytime you see a stalled vehicle. Make sure to move over or slow down. And make sure to plan your commute. We do have some road work that's going to continue. Actually, curb work out there at Lock Hill Selma Road here in Bear County. Keep in mind, drivers, this is current, but should be wrapping up on Friday, May 6th. That will start around 9 in the morning, but we can probably expect crews out there a little bit later in the next few hours or so, but should be wrapping around 4 in the afternoon. There is a single southbound lane closure at Wor the Wurzbach Parkway intersection, so make sure to plan your commute and make sure to grab those phones and open the camera apps. This is the QR code that will take you directly to the KSAT traffic page. That, of course, will have the latest on anything that could be impacting your drive time and, of course, those closures that could be in your area on maybe on your way to work. So that is a handy tool. Again, open that camera app and just tap the middle of your camera, uh, your phone, and you'll be taking a traffic page. Easy Very stuff. Good. You'll see a pop up. Just Easy, tap there. Peasy lemon squeezy. <laughs> Very good. Hi, Mike. Hi, How Mike. are you? OK, a little bit of light rain is being reported out at uh, the airport right now and then also in Kerrville. <clears throat> Excuse me. Those are the only two reporting areas that are indicating anything. But of course, in your backyard, your neighborhood, there may be some mist and drizzle out there. Uh, we've been seeing a few little drops on lenses all around town and some of the uh, trans guide cameras as well as live cams. 73 degrees out there at the airport. Again, cloudy mist or call it a sprinkle, some drizzle. And then later on this afternoon, 89 high temperature, partly sunny skies. It is going to be breezy with winds out of the uh, south southeast at 10, 20 miles per hour gusting from there and some thunderstorms tonight. We're going to talk about that in a second. All right, here's live cam looking off to the east on 410 over there by the airport and well, no drops on the lens right now, but again, in your backyard in your drive, maybe a couple of those uh, those little spots of some mist and with it's a situation with the dirt and oil on the road and you get that slight bit of water on there, you know, just a couple of sprinkles and that makes things really slippery. So this is the time of the morning or the, the kind of situation is there a sheen, maybe even a sheen on the road right there from uh, some of that rain? So, yeah, this is one of the situations where you just got to slow down, especially going into some of those those curves on the highways. Visibility, uh, three miles Castroville, four Bernie stage, five Port SA. So just hints of some fog in and around the area with that fog, probably some mist and there aren't many spots reporting just completely perfect visibility. So just those hints of uh, fog, maybe again, some mist around the area throughout the rest of the morning. We're going to have a lot of stubborn clouds and just one or two little sprinkly showers here and there as indicated by this rapid update computer model. And this afternoon we will still keep some stubborn clouds around here. We will see some sunshine though later on. Then tonight, a few of those showers and thunderstorms far northwest portions of the hill country sort of the same scenario as last night, except further up to the north. They're not going to live all that long, but then tomorrow morning we will have a couple of showers, even a thunderstorm trying to pop up around the area. But notice how the majority of those are further up to the north, and that's going to be the situation throughout late morning and early afternoon hours with this line of showers and thunderstorms kind of moving across the area. We're going to be on the tail end of it. We'll still see some rain around here, but the majority obviously is going to be further up there to the north. Now, as far as the rest of today, we do have that small chance for mist and drizzle around here this morning. Temperatures are going to stay fairly steady for the next few hours. We make it up to 81 at noon. Some sunshine then and again we top off at 89 for a high temperature tonight. One or two of those storms may be strong to potentially severe high winds and hail way out northwest portions of the hill country Del Rio Rock Springs and then up toward junction and then tomorrow the northeastern half of the area has that severe threat. Very few and far between. The majority of those, though, are going to be further up, up north of Austin, up around a College Station, and that's going to be tomorrow. A couple of them in the morning, but primarily in the uh, mid afternoon hours. 80 at noon today, mostly cloudy skies. High temperature makes it up to 89, partly sunny skies. We have a few of those showers and storms well northwest tonight. And then tomorrow, about a 30% chance for some storms. More up uh, if you're heading up I 35. And then after that, heat gets turned on. We're going to be flirting with records through the weekend. And yep, we're still looking at triple digits both Saturday as well as on Mother's Day. Steph, Mark.
Thank you very much, Mike, and may the 4th be with you. It's something you will be hearing a lot today. Yoda earrings, Darth Vader tie, Star Wars super fans across the country celebrating the film series today. That's right. So we are big fans here on GMSA, and we have been talking about Star Wars Day all morning long. And right now, we want to know your favorite Star Wars movie or your favorite Star Wars memory. You can let us know on our social media pages. So just head to our KSET Facebook or Twitter or Instagram pages, and we may share some of your responses in our later newscasts. And right now, Rangers and Astros fans are waking up in a good mood this morning after their teams got some big wins yesterday. Coming up, we're going to have a recap from those matchups, plus a look ahead to their next game. Why hide your skin? If Dupixent has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control. Hide my skin? Not me. By hitting eczema where it counts, Dupixent helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. And that means long-lasting, clearer skin and fast itch relief for adults. With Dupixent, you can show more skin with less eczema. Hide my skin? Not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur that can be severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems such as eye pain or vision changes, including blurred vision, joint aches and pain, or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can change how your skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Talk to your eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. In this morning's GMA first look, the unruly airline passenger who was duct taped by the flight crew has been sentenced to prison. That's coming up at 7 right here on KSET 12. A big time win for the Houston Astros last night, playing host to their division rivals, the Seattle Mariners. Neither team could get offense going in the first three innings. Houston finally getting on the board in the fourth and never looked back. They did win this one easily. The final for Minute Maid, Houston wins 4 0. That's a two shutout games in a row for the Strohs against Seattle. Next up, Mariners have one more game in Houston for the series. That's at 1 10 this afternoon. Meanwhile, Rangers on the road yesterday taking on the Phillies. Both clubs got to work early in this one with the Phillies scoring three Rangers scoring two in just the first inning. Texas took off later in the sixth with three runs. Texas gets the win in Philadelphia. The final six to four Texas and Philadelphia will take the field at Citizens Bank Park one more time today at 545. Well, San Antonio's Military City USA and later this morning on GMSA at 9, Max Massu will be talking about Military Spouse Appreciation Day. They're having a resource fair. He will go over how companies and local military families can get involved, link up and find the right opportunities. That's today on GMSA at 9. And time now, 625 and 74 degrees for now. Still ahead in our next half hour, a man's in the hospital this morning after he was struck by a vehicle while riding a motorcycle on the city's south side overnight. We'll have the latest on his condition. And kind of misty here and there outside. So looking there at I-35 at Wiener, things are moving for now. We'll be checking back with Stephen Cavazos very soon. San Antonio police say angry words led to a violent stabbing and have turned this street corner into a crime scene. I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you more about it. Good morning. I'm Jonathan Cotto. Empty shelves from top to bottom. That's what the situation is looking like here at the San Antonio Food Bank. Coming up on GMSA, we'll tell you the reason for that and more importantly, how you can help. It's a misty morning for some of you today and Mike reminding all of us this time of year any showers or storms could go strong to severe so just be advised and a good morning to you it is Wednesday it's a special day it's a uh, international Star Wars Day may the 4th be with you that's right happy Star Wars Day uh, Mark is celebrating there with his tie mm -hmm. your tiny the little Vader Darth Vader's and then yes. I am celebrating with, with my Yoda. baby Yoda earrings yes. and they're hard to see but we you and, know. I for, and I forgot my oh Darth I Vader know and then Mike's over here and he has so. Vader cufflinks yeah you know besides kind of changing the lexicon and everything like that um, when the first Star Wars came out and Luke Lucas went to 20th Century Fox. He goes, can I have the rights to all the stuff? And they're like, eh, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Billions all, of dollars. Yes, yes. <laughs> all the merchandise and everything. Yeah. So, so all awesome. right, this morning, watch out for some mist. We've been seeing a lot of reports. There's a little bit of light rain or 
sprinkle. It's not anything of any consequence out there by the airport. It does look like the the road over there 410 may have a bit of a, a sheen on it from some of this mist. And also you look off and you can hardly make out the horizon out there because there is some reduced visibility just a hint of fog in places. 74 degrees right now and that number remains very high. The dew point, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere and that's why we've got this just oppressively high humidity. Winds out of the southeast at 10 miles per hour. As far as visibility, four miles Castroville, Bernie stage, five Port SA, as well as in Kerrville. And with some of these uh, low clouds, some of that fog out there, you may see some mist. Although the only places reporting anything as far as a light sprinkle is International Airport as well as Kerrville right now. Everybody is seeing some reduced visibility. So again, just watch out for some of that mist. And with the roads, you know, it's not a heavy rain to wash all the oil and dirt off the roads. So that's why it, it is slippery in situations like this. Mold is moderate. Grass oak is on the low side. Hopefully we're finally done with the oak season tonight. We do have a chance for a couple of showers and thunderstorms well off to the northwest and one or two of those just a few isolated ones may become strong to potentially severe with high winds and hail. That's going to be also then the situation tomorrow. As far as the rest of today, cloudy mist, warm and humid this morning and then partly sunny skies and a couple of those evening storms well out to the west. We are going to make it into the upper 80s later on today. Tomorrow we will have a few thunderstorms, one or two of them in the morning and then in the afternoon, but the majority of those are going to be further up to the north. We'll kind of be on the tail end of it. We'll still have to be on the lookout, of course, though, and then going into Friday and especially the weekend, it is going to be very, very hot. Still looking at triple digits this weekend. Details, couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, what's going on? I've been quiet so far, Mike. Let's get a look at the roadways. I-37 at Pecan Valley. We are seeing traffic moving. Let's see a little bit of a slowdown there on 37. Uh, right now, not sure what's causing that, but could just be morning congest congestion, that is, but you can see 35 at Weedner. We are are seeing more folks out there as we are getting closer and closer to that morning rush. Might as well say that we're already here, but make sure to take it easy out there because we do have a stall right there off I-10 eastbound at Gulebda Road. You'll encounter that if you're driving into the downtown San Antonio area, so make sure to move over or slow down. But let's go ahead and get that bird's eye view of the metro area. 632 more green on the screen than anything else. However, already starting to see a little bit of a slowdown there from coming in from Castroville as well as 281 southbound, and that's what we see as these in these travel times, a 35 minute travel time. If you are coming in from 281 and Bull Verde. Now keep in mind, there are some crews out there working by Overlook Parkway that has been going on since late February, so we can likely see that continue. We will always see somewhat of a yellow uh, travel time right now, at least at this hour, if you are coming in from Bull Verde. So just remember to take it slow and give yourself plenty of time. But again, one last look at the roadways. Things are looking decent back here in town, but we'll give you those updates coming up a little bit later on guys. Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say they did not have to look far for clues related to an early morning stabbing. They say they found the weapon still at the scene and have a possible suspect in custody. This happened on North Medina between West Houston and West Commerce. Katrina Weber is there with a live report. And Katrina, what is the latest on the victim? Well, police told us that the, he was in critical condition as he left for a hospital, but they say his wound did not appear to be life threatening. Now, it also appears that there may not be a suspect after all right now, and I'll tell you more about that in a second. But as for the victim, police say he was alert and talking to them when they arrived around 430 this morning. They say the victim, who appears to be in his 30s, told them he had gotten into a fight with another man over some property. He says that other man pulled out a knife and stabbed him in his chest. Police say they found what looks like a kitchen knife still here at the scene, and they also handcuffed a man who they spent some time questioning. Now, just within the last half hour, we saw police uh, take those handcuffs off and let that man go just before they left here, left the scene themselves. So it looks like he may not be their suspect after all. They had told us earlier that someone pointed him out as the possible stabber in this case. Well, again, they took the handcuffs off him and let him go. So. It seems that that may not be the case, and police say they are still investigating. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. New this morning, a man is recovering after he was struck by a vehicle on San Antonio's southwest side. It happened on Fair Meadows Street near I-35. Police say the man in his 50s who delivers Meals on Wheels was on a bicycle when he was hit from behind by a driver in a gray SUV. That victim told police he only remembers leaving his apartment before everything went black and that he woke up later on the road in pain. 
He is in the hospital this morning and we're told he's doing okay. The search continues for the driver who hit him. Another man is in the hospital this morning after he was struck by a vehicle on the south side of town. This happened around 1015 last night on the I-35 access road near Military Drive. And that's where police say a man in his 30s was on his motorcycle when he swerved to avoid running over something on the road. That caused a woman to accidentally hit the man with her vehicle. The victim was taken to a hospital and he's going to be okay. The woman who hit him is not facing charges. And now to a dire need for help. Empty shelves at the San Antonio Food Bank are sparking concern. Representatives there say they're in a bit of a perfect storm, especially ahead of the summer months. Jonathan Cotto joins us live with details. Good morning, Jonathan. What's exactly the situation looking like out there? Good morning, Mark. The situation here at the San Antonio Food Bank is looking pretty bad, but of course, no problem. Uh, there's not a problem that doesn't have a solution. The San Antonio Food Bank hoping to counter the community support to address the food shortage and also the demand. Let's take a look at what the situation is looking like inside the San Antonio Food Bank. Empty shelves from top to bottom and food bank representatives say inflation, high rent prices, high gas prices have contributed significantly to the increase of people requesting assistance. And this comes as thousands of students whose families rely on the food bank's assistance are preparing for summer break. Reason why the food bank is in dire need of help, they're definitely anticipating the demand to increase even more in the months to come. Now, the food bank's chief development officer, Michael Guerra, says when the need is going up and food is going down, food drives are really important. And coming up, the Stamp Out Hunger Food Drive put on by the U.S. Postal Service will be happening Saturday, May 14th. It's an opportunity for local letter carriers to collect food from home porches. So the hope, their hope is that this food drive will contribute significantly. And if you're wondering what's needed, well, items like peanut butter, jellies, rice, beans, and other non-perishable items. Now, Mark Stephanie, according to representatives here at the San Antonio Food Bank, millions of pounds of canned items are needed to stock the shelves inside their warehouse before summertime. Now, this is a problem they're hoping to address. And if you would like to contribute and donate to this cause, there's more information on our website at ksat.com. Reporting live from the San Antonio Food Bank, Jonathan Cotto. Case at 12 News. All right, Jonathan, thank you. On the heels of a leaked Supreme Court document, protesters for abortion rights gathered to make their voices heard outside of the new federal courthouse here in San Antonio. They were chanting women's rights are human rights, holding signs demanding to stop the war on women. This is in direct response to the draft that indicated the high court was leaning towards striking down Roe versus Wade. Sarah and Evan Johnson brought their two daughters with them to this protest. Now they're too young to understand what's happening, but their parents say they know it will impact their lives. Women should have the right to choose when and how and under what circumstances they want to have families and abortion is an absolutely vital part of that. And not everyone agrees. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick tweeting, this is a great day for innocent babies in the womb. At this point, case at 12 emails to Governor Greg Abbott and the San Antonio Coalition for Life have not been answered. Other Republican leaders like Senator Ted Cruz sounding off on the leak itself rather than the content of the draft. Whoever did this leak should be prosecuted and should go to jail for a very long time. It is important to reiterate this draft opinion does not ensure Roe versus Wade will be struck down. Texas is bracing for an unusually uh, hot weather weekend. It appears criminals are hoping to take advantage. CPS Energy sent out an alert warning customers yesterday of scammers posing as the utility and threatening to turn off the power if they don't pay up. They remind you CPS Energy will never demand payment over the phone to prevent disconnection. The expected heat also led some to wonder if the power grid would keep up with demand. ERCOT, or the Elect Electric Reliability Council of Texas, helps manage the power grid, and they say the power will stay on. The agency has already asked power plants in the region to postpone any planned outages. They anticipate the rise in demand to take place between Friday through Monday. Silver and Black, another step closer to moving some of their home games away from the AT&T Center. Spurs Sports and Entertainment says it's a way to build the regional fan base from Mexico all the way up to Austin. The request was to allow the team to move four of its home games for two seasons. Now, yesterday, county commissioners only gave preliminary approval for one season. Legal counsel for the team addressed concerns that the Spurs could move to Austin. However, Judge Nelson Wolf wasn't entirely convinced. As the chief legal officer and general counsel of all our companies, uh, our commitment is we are staying in San Antonio. He has no authority to, it's the ownership that decides whether they're going to stay or not.
Yesterday's vote only allows the county and legal team to negotiate an amendment to the deal. A final vote is expected to happen in about two weeks. Right now, 640, about 74 degrees. And just ahead on GMSA, we're going to tell you why experts say a clean home can put you in a better mood. And welcome back. It is 644. So while you might think an extra box in a basement or bedroom isn't a big deal, clutter can actually have a big impact on your mood. In fact, a new study from St. Lawrence University found that a messy bedroom and a poor night's sleep go hand in hand. And a dirty home will zap your energy and producti productivity. Ursula Perry asks, is it time to declutter your life? I should clean out my closets more than I'm cleaning them out now. I'll tell you that. Researchers have found that cleaning helps you gain a sense of control over your environment and it can improve your mood. Want tips to help you declutter? Go room by room and focus on a category. Set some reasonable goals so you don't quit halfway through. Create a keep, donate, and toss pile. And if you find you're storing anything for someone else, give it back to them with a deadline to pick it up. What about those hard to clean items that you've been avoiding? Your pillow can have oil, dirt, sweat, bacteria, saliva, even mold. Toss them in the washer on a gentle cycle using a very small amount of detergent. Add some tennis balls to the dryer so the filling doesn't get clumped up. Coffee machines are another neglected item. An NSF international study of kitchen products found that 50% of the sampled reservoirs and coffee makers had mold or yeast. Spring is also a good time to replace your sponges. More than 75% of dish sponges and rags had salmonella, E. coli, and fecal matter. And don't forget your home office and living room. In 22 households, the NSF found yeast and mold and even staff on the computer keyboard, remote control, and video game controller. Ice makers are notorious for becoming downright health hazards. So what you need to do is unplug your refrigerator, wipe down your entire refrigerator, including your ice maker, with warm soapy water, and then replace the filter, then run it a few cycles before you use the ice again. Ursula Perry, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Ursula, and happy cleaning. Let's go ahead and get a look right now at our roadways. Things look pretty nice and not spotting any clutter here, but let's get a closer look at the roadways. We will probably see some congestion as the morning is going on. US 281 at Nakoma, there's 37 at Jones Avenue. The morning is up. People are moving, but be on the lookout. As always, we do have a stalls that are popping up. I-10 westbound at Fair Oaks Parkway is the latest stall that we are adding to our list. But other than that, we're not seeing any other problems here in town. As I mentioned, though, congestion. We're seeing it there along 1604 over on the northwest side due to some road work and 1604 and pardon me us 90 coming in from Castroville. So just remember to take it slow. There are some possible damp roads out there, so you have to make sure you are giving yourself plenty of time this morning and plan your schedule because as a quick reminder, 37 over in Atascosa County, we'll see some bridge work. Keep in mind drivers that is current and will wrap tomorrow, Thursday, May 5th. That is from nine in the morning to five in the afternoon. That's when you can expect a single northbound main lane closure right there at the Atascosa River. Other than that, things are moving guys. Thank you, Stephen. Here's what you do this weekend. Be in what? a bird bath or yeah. pool. Right? Bird's call got it, the right idea. Let's call it a bird pool. So, yeah, this guy's got the right idea because it's going to be really, really hot starting Friday in through the weekend. And it's still going to be pretty toasty going into the first part of next week. We've got a lot of low clouds. Uh, the road doesn't look maybe a little bit of a sheen, some mist. We've had some light sprinkles, drizzle being reported out there at the airports in the past couple of hours, as well as some reduced visibility. Not bad officially at the airport, but Castro, four miles, five Bernie State. Five miles visibility out there in Kerrville and then further out Rock Springs now down to uh, three miles. So just about everybody has some low clouds, uh, a little bit of fog, maybe some mist. Everything's too light. Nothing's showing up on radar right now as far as any precipitation. But we will continue to keep just a, a few of those light little sprinkles, some of the mist in through the rest of the morning commute and basically in through the morning. Temperatures will stay pretty steady, steady, maybe dropping, uh, fluctuating a degree or two. Then we'll make it into the upper 70s, 81 by noon. Wind picks up. We've got a decent breeze out there right now, but it's going to be out of the uh, south southeast at 10 20 miles per hour gusting on top of that to 25. Some sunshine thrown in later on today. 
89 for a high temperature. So once again, it is going to be very warm, five degrees above normal. This computer model again has been doing a pretty good job. Just a few of these light little sprinkly showers around this morning. A lot of stubborn clouds through mid morning and then some, like I said, some sunshine later on today. Tonight, a couple of thunderstorms going to be developing well out there to the northwest. Now, this model has them outside of our viewing area and even a couple down there, uh, perhaps off to the uh, west, but those aren't going to be living very long. Then tomorrow morning, we start to see more of the showers trying to pop up a couple of thunderstorms around here. Notice how the majority of those, though, are again well up to the north. We'll have a few around our area, and then this is going to be late morning and throughout the afternoon hours, but we're going to be on the tail end of this. However, we'll still have the chance for some of those to be on the strong, potentially severe side, starting with tonight, well out there in northwestern portions of the hill country, and then tomorrow, and this is primarily late morning, early afternoon, isolated strong to severe storm in the northwestern half, northeastern half of our viewing area. The majority of those that are going to be further up I-35 in toward Austin, as well as uh, College Station and further up north from there. So forecast today. Stubborn clouds around here, mist, drizzle this morning. That's going to be the situation throughout most of the morning and then 80 at noon, and then we'll be up to 89 later on this afternoon, partly sunny skies, and it will be on the breezy side. A couple of those uh, stronger thunderstorms potentially tonight out to the northwest, and then tomorrow, 30% chance to see one or two of them. And again, an isolated storm could be strong to potentially severe, but the majority of those will be further up to the uh, northeast tomorrow. Then we clear out and then the heat gets cranked up 96 on Friday. That'll be within range of the record, tying a record Saturday, close to it on Sunday and once again on Monday. Our CPS energy bills have been pretty tame for months now. They're about to get a little spike, aren't they? Yeah, we yeah. got a little spoiled for a oh while. Oh boy, all right, thank you, Mike. About 10 till right now, 74 degrees. And tomorrow on GMSA, how one woman is changing the lives of amputees. You're not gonna wanna miss what she's doing to challenge them to new heights. Back outside with live cam on this May the 4th. We'll wrap up GMSA after this. Good morning, I'm Jonathan Cotto. The shelves inside the San Antonio Food Bank are looking empty from top to bottom, and representatives say this is largely due to increase in gas prices, an increase in rent prices, and of course, inflation. This comes as thousands of students whose families rely on the food bank's assistance are preparing for summer break, reason why the food bank is in dire need of help. They're definitely anticipating the demand to increase even more in the months to come. The food bank's chief development officer, Michael Guerra, says when the need is going up and food is going down, food drives are really important. Stamp out hunger food drive put on by the U.S. Postal Service will be happening Saturday, May 14th. It's an opportunity for local letter carriers to collect food from home porches. If you're wondering what's needed, well, items like peanut butter, jellies, rice, beans, and other non-perishable items. And according to representatives here at the San Antonio Food Bank, millions of pounds of canned items are needed to stock the shelves inside the warehouse here at the San Antonio Food Bank. But of course, for more information on how you can help donate, you can visit ksat.com. Reporting from the San Antonio Food Bank, Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. Morning is moving. Let's get a look at the roadways right now. What you can expect are uh, some quiet traffic there 410 at Broadway, but be on the lookout as always. We do have some stalls I-10 westbound at Fair Oaks Parkway. And as we get a wide view of the map, let's take a look at some slowdowns and it looks like we may have had our first crash that's been reported there near 35 and 281. So we'll find out what's going on there and give you those updates later on. But right now we are looking at a 37 minute drive time 281 coming in from Bolverde. Pack that patience, Mike. Still a little bit of light rain is uh, being reported out there by the airport. It looks like there's a sheen on uh, 410 and we do have some reduced visibility, a hint of fog around low 70s, mid to low 70s right now, a ton of humidity, 81 at noon, 89 for a high temperature, windy today and then a couple of those storms uh, well off to the northwest later on tonight may become strong to potentially severe and then we go into the weekend and we are looking at hot, hot temperatures. Another chance of rain around here tomorrow. All right, we're going to be talking more about some of our favorite Star Wars memories coming up on GMSA at 9. Yeah, enjoy your Star Wars day, have fun, and we'll see you back here at 9. May the 4th be with you in all seriousness. <laughs>